A lot of great comedy is born. <laughs> it is? And rose to fam, fame. Rose to fam first, and then to fame. <laughs> and fortune in San Francisco. You've seen their members on MTV. We have? <laughs> and Nightline. Yes, I did see their members on Nightline, but it competed with Cope, well, what's his name? Uh, his member. They've just been featured in Newsweek. These people are so hot, they're busting thermostats all over our studio. Please welcome Duck's Breath Mystery Theater. Hello, my name is uh, Ian Scholes. It's great to be in Manhattan. The city where talking to yourself has been elevated to an art form. I vent my spleen for a living. My motto is vent for those who can't. You want to know what bugs me? I don't like waiting in line. Waiting in line makes going to the bank and going to the movies the same experience. I don't like soap operas. I don't like people who like soap operas. I don't like sports. Football players like prostitutes are in the business of ruining their bodies for the pleasure of strangers. I don't like people who speak French in public places. This includes the French. The French only invented three things. A croissant, the foreign movie, and existentialism. Existentialism pretended to be a philosophy. It was just an excuse for aging college students to hang out in ratty, ratty cafes, drink strong coffee till 3 a.m., and come to believe that despair is sexually appealing. It's not. And Jean-Paul Sartre, the third-rate thinker's pathetic attempts at irony were done much better in the Twilight Zone. Sigmund Freud is a half-baked Viennese quacker and Hemingway's most overrated writer who ever lived, and Carlos Castaneda was a liar. <laughs> and ask me this if you think you're so smart. What is hexachlorophene? What is a tegrin shake? Who in his right mind would buy a Mr. Microphone and why? Why does Ted Koppel film his hair that way? Why is he always smiling? If the me decade is over, who am I now? What did Billy Joe McAllister throw off the Tallahatchie Bridge? How many roads must a man walk down before they call him a man? Is it the same for a woman? <laughs> Now, what about the sudden fame of Fawn Hall, Jessica Hahn, and Donna Rice? Have anything to do with sexism? I don't know. You tell me. If I was caught naked in a motel love nest with Gary Hart, would Penthouse offer me half the national budget to pose naked? <laughs> I doubt it, but if they did, I'd take it. So would Gary Hart. And what about Ollie North? Is he a liar at a hearing or a hero in a T-shirt? Well, I think he's the guy Ronald Reagan would have played if they could have got Jimmy Stewart to play Ronald Reagan in the movie that would have been the Reagan administration. <laughs> I tell you, this whole thing started with the invasion of Grenada. If Reagan was so worried about the safety of Marines and medical students, why didn't he invade Harvard? <laughs> I don't know, don't ask me, I don't have the answers. I'm just a weatherman who knows which way the wind blows. I don't have the answers, I just have a job. My job is sneering. It's a tough job, but somebody's gotta do it. Let me clue you a thousand gals. Sneering doesn't pay enough. I gotta go. Good morning, welcome to World Culture on Parade. Last attempt to bring culture to cable television. Today, tonight, art for a good time. Yes, we're going to do all the paintings with the help of the one-eyed monster, the old opaque projector. You'll see some of the greatest artworks ever exposed in one place. All right, let's go to where painting really gets off, to the Renaissance. This is 1443, Mr. Van Eyck, the wedding of Giovanni Arnolfi. All right, now you know this is your Renaissance painting by the microscopic detail. You'd recognize Giovanni anywhere. His bride to the right, slightly pregnant. That's an old Renaissance tradition. A little dog on the floor is a symbol of fidelity, and the shoes on the left are a symbol of stability. Let's get out of here and go to Italy, the land where the Renaissance began. And the man whose game we all love to play, Mr. Botticelli. This is 1488, the birth of Venus. Uh, <laughs> This is the first great sensual rendering of pagan subject matter. Note the pastel tones in the human flesh. You see here Venus, newly born in the half shell, while Iris, goddess of the horizon, attempts to clothe the naked figure, and Boreas, the north, north wind, tries to blow the clothes away. A little sense of humor, something not seen in the medieval stained glass. Moving on to Norway for a little expressionism. That crazy Yorgi Torgi Forgi, Edvard Munch. This is 1898, The Scream. Now, it's obvious in the hollowed eyes, the green complexion on the fella in the foreground, his face says, Scream. <laughs> Typical of expressionism. His body's contorted, as is the blue, green, and puce landscape in the background. Much in contrast, the fake perspective of the bridge railing and the two dwarfs in the back. <laughs> Moving on to France. 1907, Mr. Pablo Picasso, Le Damsels d'Avignon. <laughs> now, 
This piece. This piece brings us the birth of Cubism. As you look from the far left to the far right, you see the painting becomes more and more abstracted. The figure on the far left is almost impressionistic in its rendering, but the abstraction takes over progressively till the figure on the far right is almost an African mask. And now my favorite, 1912, the great granddaddy of Dada and surrealism, Marcel Duchamp, nude descending a staircase. All right, now this is obvious that Oh, we're uh, almost out of time here, and I still want to do architecture before the period's out, so I'm going to cut a few things and squeeze a few things together for the sake of time. All right, this is 1936-39. Frank Lloyd Wright, Bear Run, Pennsylvania, falling water. Now, you see here large planes suspended to create a feeling of openness. There's a fluidity to the work, and yet the solidarity of those flat planes holding the structure together, much in contrast to lots of other architecture you're going to see someplace sometime. Now, that's all the painting and architecture, but next time we'll be doing sculpture, poetry, non-Western history, first 2,000 years, and the written word. Please join us. They'll show you why. Hey!